Hi friends, welcome to Biology Excels for you.com. Today's topic of our discussion is Charkov's rule in detail. At the end of this video, you will be able to understand what was Charkov's experiment, how he derived Charkov's rule, and how to calculate base composition using Charkov's rule within 5 to 10 minutes. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe and support this channel. Let's begin with Charkov's experiment. For better understanding, let us divide it into two parts. First, he determined the base composition of DNA from different species. He isolated DNA from E. coli, Diplococcus, yeast, humans, many organisms. And this was the procedure he followed. He separated the DNA mixture into individual components or bases by paper chromatography. Then identified and quantified the nitrogenous bases, that is purines and pyrimidines, using their UV absorption spectra. I will be leaving the link of the paper in the description. And the second part is isolation of DNA from different sources of the same organism. For example, from humans, he has isolated DNA from thymus, liver, then sperm cells, spleen, etc. And followed the same procedure. Of separating the bases and quantifying it and this was the result as you can see in E. coli adenine is 26 moles whereas thymine is 23 in diplococcus it is 29 and 31 whereas in rat it is 28 moles of adenine and 28 moles of thymine and from this he deduced that the amount of adenine is approximately equal to the amount of thiamine. This is the first part of Charkov's rule. Here also the guanine, the concentration of guanine as you can see in humans it is 19.9 moles whereas cytosine is 19.8 moles. So he confirmed that the amount of guanine is also approximately equal to cytosine. So this is the first part of Charkov's rule. The amount of adenine is approximately equal to the amount of thiamine, whereas the amount of guanine is equal to the amount of cytosine. Or in other words, purines, the double ringed adenine and guanine forms the purines. The amount of purines is equal to the amount of pyrimidines. The pyrimidines are the thiamine and the cytosine. Now moving into the second part of Charkov's rule. And he also found out that the composition, the amount of A plus D is not equal to the amount of G plus C in different species. As you can see in E. coli it is 1, whereas in Diplococcus it is 1.59, in rat it is 1.33, whereas in humans it is 1.52. So the second part is the amount of A plus D is not equal to the amount of G plus C. The ratio varies among species. The third part is this ratio is same in different tissues of the same organisms. As you can see in humans it is 1.52 in thymus whereas it is in liver it is 1.53 whereas in sperm it is 1.62. So the ratio of A plus T by G plus C is same in different tissues of the same organism but differs between species. These all together forms the Charkov's rule. And these are the publications as you can see this publication is referred by Watson and Crick in their paper regarding the structure of DNA. Why Charkov's rule is important? The point is Charkov's rule provided the most important clue for discovering the DNA structure by Watson and Crick by providing the data regarding the base pairing regularities or complementarity relationships of nucleic acids. And this experiment also disproved the tetranucleotide hypothesis that was very prevalent at that time. And these are some of the publications and many publications are there from 1948 to 1952 on base composition of different organisms and also like this different tissues of the same organisms in this paper thymus and spleen tissues DNA is isolated and quantified the basis and one more point to add is the complementarity relationship of this basis also provided the information to explain the DNA replication 
mechanism by Watson and Crick. As each strand serves as a template for the synthesis of the complementary strand. This is basically due to this base pairing regularity or complementarity relationship discovered by Charkov. Now moving into problems to find out the base composition using Charkov's rule. First one, in humans there is approximately 30% adenine. What is the percentage of other nitrogenous bases? Adenine plus concentration of guanine is equal to concentration of cytosine plus concentration of thiamine. That is altogether it makes 100%. Adenine is 30%. So adenine always pairs with thiamine. Therefore thiamine will also be 30%. Altogether concentration of A plus T will make 30 plus 30 60%. Then it is very easy to find out the rest. So guanine and cytosine will form the rest of 40%. So in order to find out G plus C 100 minus 60 it will be 40%. Guanine will be 20% whereas cytosine will also be 20% to make this 40%. So the answer is concentration of adenine is 30% thiamine 30%, guanine 20% and cytosine 20%. Question number 2. A segment of DNA has 120 adenine and 120 cytosine bases. The total number of nucleotides present in the segment is. It is just like the previous question. According to Charkov's rule, as we all know that, adenine always pairs with thiamine, whereas adenine always pairs with thiamine, guanine always pairs with cytosine. Here what is given is adenine is 120 when cytosine is 120. So as adenine, the concentration of adenine is equal to concentration of thiamine as per Charkov's rule, then if there is 120 adenine residues, there will be 120 thiamine residues. The same is the case with cytosine also. If there is 120 cytosine residues, there will be 120 guanine residues as you can see here because of base complementarity. Then the total number of nucleotides will be number of adenine plus number of thiamine plus number of cytosine plus number of guanine that is 120 plus 120 plus 120 plus 120 that is 480 number of nucleotides. So it's a very simple question. Now question number three. If the ratio of A plus G by T plus C in one of the strand is 0.7 what is the same ratio in complementary strand? So this is given. A plus T by T plus C is 0.7. That is in otherwise 7 is to 10. That is A plus G is equal to 7 and T plus C is equal to 10. So as per the Chargaff's rule, adenine always pairs with thiamine and cytosine always pairs with guanine. Therefore in the complementary strand it will be the reverse. So in the complementary strand, it will be T plus C by A plus G. This A plus G in the complementary strand, A will become T like this. Therefore, G will become C. So that is T plus C. This T will become A in the complementary strand and C will become G. Therefore, the ratio becomes reverse. 10 is to 7 and or 10 by 7. That is approximately 1.4 or 1.43. Hope you got the point. Moving into the final question. Following is the result of base composition of whole genome sequencing of a sample. What's your inference? Cytosine is 10%, adenine 30%, thiamine 30% and guanine is 30%. According to Charkov's rule, the concentration of adenine is equal to concentration of thiamine whereas concentration of guanine is equal to concentration of cytosine. So let us substitute the data. It's okay. Adenine 30%, thiamine 30%. Okay, fine. It obeys Charkov's rule. The second part, guanine 30% and cytosine 10%, this part is not obeying Charkov's rule. So first inference is this data doesn't obey Charkov's rule. Then what are the exceptions? The exceptions to Charkov's rule are in the case of single-stranded DNA or RNA that will be present in viral genomes. So this is a single stranded DNA. So from this in single stranded viruses they are the exceptions. So here in the data there is no uracil. Therefore and this will be the genome of single stranded DNA virus. Hope you understand the concept. If you find this video useful please subscribe, share and like this video. Thank you so much for your support. You are with biologyexamsforay.com.